People usually think that One Piece is a show about pirates or devil fruits, but in reality, One Piece is actually about dreams. Literally every important person in this story talks about it non-stop. Roger, Blackbeard, Big Mom, even Vegapunk tells us that devil fruits themselves are somehow made from dreams. And even Luffy's idea of defeating his own opponents revolves mostly around crushing their dreams, not killing them. But most importantly, without a dream you can't actually even become a straw hat because each of the straw hats has a unique dream they openly state. But not just that, most of them even have a second secret dream as well, so let's get into all of that. And there's really no better place to start than with the brutal vice captain Roronoa Zoro. And that's because out of every straw hat, Zoro's dreams are about as clear cut as it gets. And that's right, Zoro is one of those crew members who actually do have two dreams slash goals that they need to accomplish instead of just one. And turns out the second secret one might just be a bit more devilish than the first. But let's start with the obvious one first. Zoro has proclaimed time and time again that he will be the strongest swordsman in the world. And this all stems from a promise that he made with his rival and childhood best friend Koina. Now Koina was actually another swordsman in Shimotsuke village where Zoro grew up. And you see, she was actually vastly superior to Zoro as a swordsman all the way up until her tragic death at the hands of down these stairs. Okay, yeah, maybe not the best taste in jokes, but come on, falling down the stairs really is the worst way to go, like maybe she got pushed or something else. Who knows? Regardless, Queena was objectively better than Zoro. However, tragically, she also believed that she could never become the strongest because with time, Zoro would inevitably become faster, stronger, and just more powerful than she was. That's because her own father instilled in her the belief that because she was a woman, it would just be impossible for her to achieve that goal and compete with men. Well, it turns out Zoro wasn't gonna have any of that, and after their 201st duel, which coincidentally resulted in Zoro's 201st defeat, they actually made a promise to each other one of them would go on to become the strongest swordsman in the world, which Queena then promptly forfeited in her battle with the staircase. And so, as a direct result of her death, Zoro's dream kicked into absolute overdrive, proclaiming that he would become so incredibly powerful that Kuina would be able to hear his name from heaven. It's a dream that then Dracul Mihawk pushed even further too, because after their kind of humiliating battle, Zoro realized just how far he still was from being close to the pinnacle of the One Piece world. And now let's be real, you probably know this dream of Zoro's, it's pretty obvious, so why did I mention that he has two? His second dream is actually a direct result in combination with the first one. That's because it feeds into him becoming the world's strongest swordsman, and that's because during his battle with King on Onigashima, we learned that Zoro resolve is far beyond that what we already knew. You see, at the end of their fight, we see Zoro triple down on the promise that he made with Luffy that he will not lose. And with a fearsome roar, he declares to the heavens that he will become the king of hell. After all, if death is defeat, then he cannot afford to have that happen, not at least until his true dream of becoming the strongest swordsman is fully realized. And to prove to himself, his captain and his best friend, Zoro needs to break through to heaven, and only then can he actually sit back, relax, and have a drink. Because in the end, he's probably really gunning for that Dark King Rayleigh life after his retirement. But don't worry, Zoro is actually pretty close to accomplishing this quite brutal goal. He's taken down a quite impressive number of really powerful swordsmen, that there's really now only a small handful of enemies left that could even pose a real threat to him. Shiryu, one of the Gorosei, and potentially Saint Figurland Garling are are really the only real ones left besides Mihawk himself for him to really test himself against. I mean, he also defeated the clone of Mihawk as Snake, so it's pretty safe to say that he's really well on his way to becoming a Pokemon, I mean, becoming the world's strongest swordsman. All right, but with the must-have stream out of the way, let's talk about the next straw hat, the lovely and beautiful navigator, Nami. And while at first glance, Nami's dreams might also seem quite straightforward, don't worry, we're gonna get to some truly crazy, unclear, and wild ones later down the line. But for now, back to her. Because Nami has actually made it very clear through Arlong Park that her dream is to create a full map of the entire world. Which is just an incredible 
and truly awe-inspiring goal. I mean, she wants to explore the entire globe and be the greatest map maker that there ever was. Which at first kind of sounds simple until you realize that it's absolutely insane. I mean, to do this, she's not only going to have to find Love Tale, the hidden island that holds the One Piece and a bunch of other secret islands and locations, but literally visit every part of the globe. Is she nuts? Well, quite frankly, no. Because lucky for her, she's well on her way to doing just that, having already passed through most of the most dangerous and hard to get to places in the world already. I mean, she's been to the gorgeous Sky Islands, below the red line to the inspirational Fishman Island, and is actively navigating the dangerous Grand Line and now the New World. In other words, she's really well on her way to accomplishing this dream, but as I mentioned previously, I think Nami also has a secondary dream, one that lies a little bit hidden beneath the surface. And that's because when you really think back to Nami's introduction as a cat burglar and greedy fiend of a person, we really start to understand what she truly desires. Now, initially we all thought that it seemed to stem from trying to earn her and her hometown's freedom from Arlong and his crew, but her desire for treasure doesn't ever really seem to stop throughout the story because she's always about that filthy and sweet cash money. Okay, but obviously not for those reasons. Nami is not really like that. Nami does this because she was raised to truly understand the liberating freedom that money and financial security provides. In other words, Nami gives all the signs of being a poor child whose dream was to have some money and stability that drives now her every move. And it does make a lot of sense too. I mean, to help her realize Luffy's and her crew's individual dreams as well, their cash flow is actually surprisingly important. But she still got quite a to go with her main dream. I mean, we still haven't seen the crew go to three out of the four major oceans yet and to map the whole planet. Well, Nami's got a few years or let's be real, decades left at the very least. I just feel bad she has to take care of the whole crew that whole time, it seems. Really, in a lot of ways, she does kind of have the whole single mom trying to provide for her kids kind of vibe going on. So I guess good on you, Nami. What a noble cause. Very much unlike her captain's dream. Yeah, that's right. Just wait until I tell you about Luffy's dreams. They are far from noble and are absolutely shocking to hear because Luffy's dream is actually not to become Pirate King. But speaking of lacking ability, someone with a far more selfish dream is the sniper extraordinaire God Uso. And that's because unlike Zoro or Nami, his dream is really taking some difficult interpretation to actually realize. And that's because his dream is just way too open-ended. I mean, we find out through the infamous barrel scene on the East Blue where the original crew all pronounce their own dreams, that Usopp wants to be a brave warrior of the sea. Which at first sounds great and noble and all, but it's definitely also deeply rooted in Usopp's insecurities and fears as well. But what exactly does that mean? I mean, he clearly doesn't think that he's accomplished that goal quite yet, and he has slayed dinosaurs, liberated entire countries, became a god, and I guess fought a mole person. And what's even more mind-boggling is that he's befriended all of the giants, I mean, that all basically sounds like a brave warrior of the sea to me. Usopp basically becomes that every single arc when he overcomes his cowardness. But to be fair, it's also widely theorized in the fandom that to actually realize his own dream, Usopp will have to believe the lies that he tells to himself as well, or at least realize them all to completion, and it may just be on the island Elbaf of the giants that this dream fully gets realized if Usopp realizes it himself. In other words, if Usopp can go on to lead the giants into war, for example against the world government, I think that finally, in his own eyes as well, he will see himself as a brave warrior of the sea, because that's really the whole point of his dream, it kind of doesn't matter what others or what we think, Usopp needs to believe that himself. And honestly, you're a real one for that Usopp, I mean, it can be really difficult to believe in yourself in the ways others believe in you, but rest assured, I'm very confident that Usopp will become a brave warrior in his own eyes someday day soon. But now that we've covered the Sniper Supreme, it's time to talk about the Straw Hat Chef. It's time to talk about Sanji's dreams. And you better buckle up because Sanji has, in my opinion, the most crazy and difficult dream out 
out there. What do I mean by that? Well, ever since he was a young kid, Sanji has dreamed of finding the legendary All Blue. This is a mythical location where all the four seas, the north, south, east, and west blue all meet together, creating this magical place where all types of fish from everywhere around the globe swim together and all types of seafood and sea plants grow as well. In other words, making it the ultimate spot for any chef on the high seas. After all, you would literally have any ingredient you could ever want in one convenient place. Though the most absolutely insane thing about Sanji's dream is that it is actually his dream that literally saved his life. That's because when the pirate Red Leg Seth found a young Sanji, Zeph only decided to save him from their shipwreck after he learned that that was Sanji's dream. Because as you could imagine, it was actually a dream that he had also chased during his days as a pirate. And you see, Zeph really is the reason that Sanji has to do this. He owes it to his mentor and to himself to see his dream through. Because once he finds the All Blue, he will be able to do his best cooking and feed everyone. A cause that he's had since he was a young kid that Zeph then reinforced. In other words, for Sanji, the All Blue is the secret to saving the world through food. Unfortunately, this legendary sea is impossible to find. It's actually even harder to find than Love Tail, and that's because there isn't any map to find it. That's right, unlike the One Piece, which has the Poneglyphs, these ancient giant stone rocks that are a map to the island, the All Blue is truly a mystery. However, for many years, there has been an amazing theory about how Sanji could actually complete his dream, and that's by completely destroying the giant red line that divides all of the seas. Because then all of the oceans would actually be combined in one location, literally creating the mythical All Blue, which definitely does go to support the theories that the red line is an unnatural element of the One Piece world. If it's not supposed to be there originally, then the legends of the All Blue were simply be lost to ancient history. So let's really hope that that's the case, because honestly, Sanji isn't anywhere close to finding the All Blue at all at this rate. He still has no leads, except maybe one, because what if maybe Love Tail is in the All Blue? I mean, that would be pretty convenient, I guess. Kind of like a two for one special on dreams, but we don't have time for theories right now. There are eight more dreams to cover. And yes, I'm sure you just went like, Manu, there's not even that many straw hats left. How could you have eight more dreams to cover? Well, chill, that's because there are three characters that I count as straw hats technically that have dreams as well that we need to discuss. So let's take a quick detour and talk about those honorary straw hats as well. Momonosuke, Yamato, and Nefatari Vivi are the three honorary straw hats with dreams that we do know exist. In fact, Momo's and Yamato's dreams do kind of go hand in hand. I mean, Momonosuke's dream was to become a fierce shogun of Wano, much like his father, Kozuki Oden, which we do know he has by now achieved. Therefore, no need to travel with Luffy anymore. Well, at least he has achieved the shogun part. He's still got some work to do on the ferocity side of things, but he is working towards it. I mean, being willing to challenge a marine admiral is the most I am my father level of flexes that I've seen. One that I think surely sets him on a great path for growth. And of course, speaking of Kozuki Oden, Yamato's dream is to live life like the legendary Shogun, which all but confirms that one day she will actually sail again with the Straw Hats, much like Odin did with Whitebeard and the Raja Pirates. Until we see her again though, right now she is on her own journey through the sacred land of Wano, just like Odin did. Which means that now we have to address Vivi, a true Straw Hat whose dream has already been realized as well, which is why again she is no longer with the crew. Vivi's dream was to save her country, Alabasta, from the evil clutches of the big back crocodile, crocodile. But of course, once Luffy and the Straw Hats absolutely messed that poor man up, Vivi's dream was actually fulfilled, Alabasta was safe, which in the end made her the first fully accomplished streamer among the crew, in the end also leaving the crew as a result. However, while Vivi was still part of the crew, we also met the lovable doctor, Tony Tony Chopper, and this little reindeer just has the most noble and wholesome goal out of the entire life. Lot, I think. He's just so precious. He just wants to cure any and all diseases out there. All of them. Like, what an absolute legend. Without any questions, one of the most noble dreams out of anyone in the crew. There's just one issue. It's basically inconceivable. I mean, where did he even get that idea in the first place? Well, it turns out a big part of that dream was his mentorship from the goofy Dr. Hero look and the ever mysterious.
mysterious Dr. Kureha. Without their guidance, when he became a reindeer human orphan, Chopper would never have taken up the cause of medicine in the first place, and it's actually Hiroluk's death that truly pushed Chopper into the path of the ultimate doctor. That's because Chopper, in his <clears throat> youthful ignorance, accidentally poisoned Hiroluk and promised through Korea's teachings to never make that mistake ever again. And therefore, crafting his dream to become the One Piece world's greatest doctor. But until he gets there, I really can't tell how close Chopper is to his dream. I mean, he definitely solved a ton of crazy diseases so far, which means he's definitely got the chops to do it. But is he 50% there? Is he 80%? Who, who knows? It's really hard to measure there. But more importantly, as we finished half the crew, these dreams are getting wilder and wilder. And I bet right about now you think you know Luffy's big dream reveal already, but assure you, again, it's not what you think. I swear, Luffy's dream is going to shake the world. It's not to become Pirate King. But speaking of world-shaking dreams, next, we just have to talk talk about the archaeologist and absolute heartthrob of the One Piece world, Nico Robin. And arguably, she may just have the most blatantly selfish goal out of anyone in the crew. Hear me out. You see, Nico Robin was, of course, a citizen of the island of Ohara, which made her a natural-born scholar. And through her childhood, after learning under Professor Clover here and dreaming to follow her mother, Nico Olivia's footsteps, Robin yearned to uncover the true history of the world. However, the one Piece world does follow a very simple philosophy. Knowledge is a burden, and once you take it up, you can never let it go. In other words, Robin's knowledge was a burden that led to the pure destruction of Ohara. Now, despite that fact though, thanks to her final mentor, Jaguar D. Saul, Robin's true dream was finally materialized. She would uncover the secrets of the world and keep the will of Ohara alive. That is the burden that she carries, that of her entire nation, and in doing so, she unknowingly became the flame of the revolution and one of the world government's most feared enemies as well. Because if there is one thing that's true about One Piece, it's that the world government lives by preventing its citizens from knowing the truth about anything, present or past. Robin though, she's going to spread that truth to the entire world, something that she's on the cusp of doing right now. And once she makes it to Love Tail, it is game over. She will know everything. And once she has uncovered the secrets of the world, she will finally be able to live happily with her newly found family, which is her true desire to laugh and feel loved supporting those around her. Something that she's finally been able to find with the Straw Hat crew and something that she'll be able to put her full effort in once the will of Ohara is fulfilled and secure. And holy cow, that was a doozy. I mean, Robin's goals and dreams are full of darkness and a lot of responsibility. I think we need a truly super dream to refresh ourselves here, and thanks to Frankie, we luckily have just that. And of course, due to the fact that Frankie is a shipwright of Water 7, it's kind of a no-brainer that his dream revolves around creating the most bombastic and amazing ship that has ever sailed the high seas. And yeah, honestly, that's kind of it. He wants to build the Pirate King's vessel and then sail the seas having a bunch of crazy adventures, and in doing so, building a ship to rival the legendary Oro Jackson, Gold D. Rogers ship. And when he does, he will have realized his dream of creating a ship to find Love Tail and sail on it as well. Which means it's pretty safe to say that once the series ends, Frankie, at the very least, out of all the Straw Hats, will definitely have accomplished his goal. After all, we do have to find the One Piece. It's kind of in the name of the series. But the fun and happy dreams, of course, aren't over yet. Because Brooke, the musician of the Straw Hats, has arguably the most adorable dream of all of them. You see, this skeleton has lived a quite long and tragic life, but in doing so, he befriended a creature that he must return to reunite with once again. You see, way back when the Straw Hats first crossed the red line, they came across Laboon, a spunky island whale. And well, that Laboon just so happens to also know our dear skeleton Brook. Well, back from when he was still alive at least. So it's become his main goal ever since he found out that Laboon is still alive and well to go back and visit him once again. Something that he's definitely bound to do before the final war on the Holy Land, and that is what I call a really powerful bond.
ground. Though I do must admit there is a dreamer among the Straw Hats who wants to create an even greater bond, and that's to craft and nurture the bond between fishmen and humans, two whole races. That's right, next we're talking about Jimbei's dream. And as you probably know, Jimbei is incredibly well-traveled, and if there was an award for crew hopping, this whale shark would probably take the cake. I mean, he has literally served just about every great pirate on the seas, but none more influential on him than his very first captain, Fisher Tiger. Sort of mirroring the likes of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, Jimbei has the same goal as Fisher Tiger, and that's to create equality among the fishmen and other races of the One Piece world, destroying all discrimination in the world of One Piece as well. And while his partner Arlong might have taken the wrong and much more misguided path as a sun pirate, Jimbei definitely hasn't. He's just overall a really awesome dude all around. If anyone can achieve this goal, it is Jimbei. It's obviously an incredibly important dream for him to have because the only person that can make this change is of course a fisherman themselves. Especially one who is destined for greatness. I mean, he has the ability to change the entire One Piece world and bears the responsibility as one of the last remaining Sun Pirates. I have no doubt that Jimbei will in the end see Fisher Tiger's dream come true. And of course, to accomplish that dream, he has allied himself with the warrior of liberation, Monkey D. Luffy. After all, who better to support if your main dream is liberation and equality? It's kind of a no-brainer. Plus, with Luffy destined to destroy Fishman Island, Jimbei's about to have a whole lot of work to accomplish his own dream as well. And it's gonna take a long time and hard work to do so if the real world is any indication. But since I've brought up no-brainers and the warrior of liberation now, it is time to talk about the fearless straw hat captain, Monkey D. Luffy. And again, I bet you thought this was obvious, prepare to be sorely mistaken about this. Because as 99% of people would say, Luffy's dream is to become king of the pirates, right? To be the one that is the most free. He said that time and time again. Obviously, that's his dream. Boom, case closed. See ya. Oh, oh yeah, no. Turns out it's, it's not quite that simple. You see, we actually have never heard Luffy's actual dream just yet. Yeah, you heard me right. When he was a child, we saw Luffy share his real dream with Ace and Sabo, and they had pretty mixed reactions about it. Not unlike Whitebeard's and Odin's reactions when they found out Roger's true dream that we also don't know, but which we learned thanks to Odin's memoirs, that Luffy and Roger may actually share the exact same dream. In other words, it must be part of the whole Pirate King thing, but it is not becoming Pirate King. And come to think of it, quite recently, the Straw Hats all had very similar reactions when they finally found out Luffy's true dream as well. It must be truly hilarious. But regardless, because of the fact that we don't know what it really is, we do know that King of the Pirates is just a sort of stepping stone for Luffy to accomplish his real dream. And so the 100 billion berry question is, what is it? And lucky for you, we actually do have some killer theory. So let's talk about what it could be. Mostly there are two popular ideas floating around about Luffy's true dream and both make a lot of sense. Starting with the first one, which heavily revolves around Luffy's favorite thing, food. According to this idea, his real dream may be to create a world where nobody is ever hungry. A place where anyone can eat whenever, whatever, and however they want. And to be fair, that would actually be a pretty noble dream, which is why I think it's a little bit more unlikely after all the Straw Hats were all cracking up after hearing this dream. So on the other hand, the most insane dream theory out there is the idea that Luffy is trying to be the god of festivals and throw the world's biggest party. That's right, he's on a crash course to host the craziest and most insane party that the world has ever seen. After all, we do see Luffy host crazy rages and festivals after literally every major art. Arc. And so I think it makes sense that if Luffy's going to liberate the entire One Piece world, we'd have to throw the most insane party. But as insane as that is, if you're curious how close each of the Straw Hats are to actually achieving their goals and kind of their entire evolution towards that dream throughout the story, I have this super in-detail breakdown analysis of all the Straw Hats character arcs through the entire story so far, so check that out if you're interested. With that said, have a great one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, hit some other buttons, really helps me out and uh, thanks so much for watching.